popular app TikTok faces a risk of being banned here in the United States over its ties to China. Scott McFarlane is on Capitol Hill with a closer look at what lawmakers are trying to do with a new bill. Fueled by viral videos, TikTok offers a stage for millions. But soon, the curtain could be coming down, including for Kim Pham, who says she leans heavily on TikTok to lure customers. So follow us to come along on this journey. To her company in California. What happens to you if it's just banned one day? It wouldn't kill us tomorrow, but TikTok as a platform has represented a very kind of meaningful and new way that we reach consumers. New legislation set for review by a U.S. House committee tomorrow requires TikTok to separate itself or divest from its Chinese-based owner, ByteDance, or risk a ban from app stores in the U.S. We implore ByteDance to sell TikTok so that its American users can enjoy their dance videos, their bad lip sync, everything else that goes along with TikTok. <laughs> Amid growing fears, the personal information TikTok devours from its users could fall into the hands of Chinese adversaries. There may be millions of TikTok users who say, don't ban this. We love this. Well, the choice is up to TikTok. They have a choice to make as to whether or not they want to remain with ByteDance that we know is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. And Scott joins me uh, for more now. Hey, Scott, uh, this comes nearly a year after TikTok's CEO was uh, questioned in front of Congress. What's changed in that period? The TikTok's making the same argument, John, that they have firewalls in place to protect user data, that this type of bill, a ban on TikTok, would trample First Amendment rights for tens of millions of Americans. The politics there have been unique from the start and haven't shifted much in the past year, but they've started to come together. This is one of those rare bipartisan issues. It's hard to find traditional party lines on this. There's been a momentum that's been building steadily over the past year. But time is also running short. They put this clock on TikTok if the bill were to pass. And if they waited a much longer, this Congress would be over before that clock hit the zero mark. Scott, is, it, is one explanation for the bipartisan support here that basically both parties are fine with or have people in them who are fine with bashing China, essentially? That's always popular in an election year. The subcommittee that they formed here, the special committee on the Chinese Communist Party, has been clearly, as this Congress develops, John, one of the most bipartisan and congenial of all of Congress's committees, which might speak to the politics of that, right? That there is a bipartisan attitude and a bipartisan spirit in initiatives or investigations that target China. But I'll say this, there are contrarian voices here, a number of progressives, including Jamal Bowman of New York, who say this bill goes way too far and that it does indeed infringe on First mm -hmm. Amendment rights and has a hint of hypocrisy because there are a number of members of Congress who utilize this tool and the White House, which has endorsed this bill, uses it too. Sure, get their message out to the kids. The FBI and uh, Justice Department both briefed House members on TikTok. What do we know about that? They briefed them last week. They'll brief them again tomorrow, just before the House Energy and Commerce Committee marks up this legislation. This thing is moving swiftly. They introduced it yesterday. It goes to a markup tomorrow. There's a briefing for members in between, which gives you some indication that top officials in the Department of Justice have skin in the game here and have an interest in informing lawmakers about what's going on with TikTok, ByteDance, and China. There's a train moving down the tracks now on this, John, but in this Congress, every significant train has derailed. Speaking of derailed trains, funding the government. Um, what's the, we're going to switch tracks now. What's the state of the House bill to avert uh, another uh, partial government shutdown? They have averted a shutdown for about six months with a fraction of the government, but they've set the table for doing the rest of the government later this month. But this is like the difference between golf and mini golf. They're playing mini golf here on little small courses, just trying to get the ball through the windmill. And ultimately what they've done is moved outside normal house rules. They've circumvented their procedures just to do little things like keep the government open for months at a time. There's still the prospect, John, of all this coming to a head again in September, just weeks before the election. Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill, trains and versions of golf. Thank you, Scott. That was very helpful.